Thanks very much. How do you do? Hello down there. And how are to everybody else? The, I was not anybody famous. I did not even have my degree when I started to work on uh, stuff associated with the Manhattan Project. Many of the other people who tell you about Los Alamos uh, know something. They're up in some higher echelon of government, of the organization or something, or worried about some big decisions. I worried about no big decisions. I was always flittering about underneath somewhere. One of my diseases, one of my things in life is anything that's secret I try to undo. At the very beginning, we had terribly important secrets. We'd worked out lots of stuff about uranium, how it worked, and all this stuff was in documents that were in filing cabinets that were made out of wood that had on them little ordinary common padlocks. And various things made by the shop, like a rod that would go down and then a padlock to hold it, but so it was the padlock. Furthermore, you could get the stuff out even without opening the padlock out of these wooden cabinets. You just tilt it over backwards in the bottom drawer, you know, it has a little rod that's supposed to hold and there's a hole in the wood underneath, you can pull the papers out from below. So I used to pick the locks all the time and point out that it was very easy to do. And every time we had a meeting of everybody together, I'd get up and I'd say that we have important secrets and we need better locks. <laughs> and so uh, one day Teller got up at the meeting, I got up at, and he says to me, uh, well, I don't keep my most important secrets in my filing cabinet, I keep them in my desk drawer. Isn't that better? I said, I don't know, I haven't seen your desk drawer. Well, he's sitting near the front of the meeting, and I'm sitting further back. So the meeting continues, and I sneak out of the meeting. And I go down to see his desk drawer, okay? I don't even have to pick the lock on the desk drawer. It turns out if you put your hand in the back underneath, you can pull out a paper like those toilet paper dispensers. You pull out one, it pulls another. I empty the whole damn drawer, took everything out and put it away to one side, and then went up on the higher floor and came back and the meeting is just ending and everybody's coming out and I join the crew like this, you see, and walking along with it and run up to catch up with Teller and says, oh, by the way, let me see your desk drawer. Certainly, he says, so we walk into his office and he uh, shows me the desk and I look at it and I say, that looks pretty good to me. That's pretty safe, it looks to me like it's pretty safe. I said, let's see what you have in there. So he says, I'd be very glad to show it to you. He says, putting the key, he opens it, looks and he says, if you hadn't already seen it yourself. The trouble with playing a trick on a highly intelligent man like Mr. Teller is the time that it takes him to figure out from the moment that he sees that there's something wrong till he understands exactly what happened is too damn small to give you any pleasure. Wow. And then they got filing cabinets which had safe combinations. And so those filing cabinets were made by the Mosler Lock, Lock Company, in which we put our documents after that. Everybody had them. They represented a challenge to me, how the hell to open them. So I worked on them and I worked on them. There's all kinds of stories about how you can feel the numbers and listen to things and so on. That's true and I understand it very well. For old-fashioned sakes, they had a new design so that nothing would be pushing against the wheels while you were trying them. I won't go into the technical details, but none of the old method would work. I read books by locksmiths. Books by locksmiths always say in the beginning how the safe's underwater and a woman is drowning or something and you open the safe. I don't know, a crazy story. And then in the back they tell you how they do it and they don't tell you anything sensible. It doesn't sound like they could really open safes that way. After the war was over, I went back to Los Alamos to finish some papers. And there I did some safe opening, which I could write a safe cracker book better than any safe cracker book. It would start in the beginning and it would explain how I opened the safe absolutely cold without knowing the combination which contained more secret thing than any safe has ever been opened. I opened the safe that contained behind it the secret of the atomic bomb, all the secrets, the formulas, the rates at which neutrons are liberated from uranium, how much uranium you need to make a bomb, all the theories, all the calculations, the whole damn thing. This is the way it was done, all right? I was trying to write this report. I needed this report. It was a Saturday. So I went down to the library. The library at Los Alamos had all these documents. And there was a great vault with a great knob of a different kind of knob I didn't know anything about. Not only that, but there were guards walking back and forth in front with guns. Can't get that one open, okay? So I didn't get it, and I think, wait. Old Freddy de Hoffman, in the declassification section, he's in charge of declassifying documents. Which documents now can be declassified? And so he had to run down to the library and back so often, he got tired of it, and he got a brilliant idea. 
Did he get a copy made of every document in Los Alamos Library, right? And he'd stick it in his filing cabinet, and he had nine filing cabinets, one right next to the other in two rooms, full of all the documents of Los Alamos. And I knew he had that. So I'll go up to the office, and I'll ask him to borrow the document from him. He's got a copy. So I went up to his office, and the office door is open. And it looks like he's coming back. The light is lit. It looks like he's coming back any minute. So I wait. And as always, when I'm waiting, I diddle the dolls. I tried 10, 20, 30. Didn't work. 20, 40, 60. Didn't work. <laughs> Try everything. I'm waiting. Nothing to do. Then I begin to think. I'm going to open this one by psychology. First thing. The secretary is very often nervous that she will forget the combination, and she's been told the combination she might forget, and the boss might forget she has to know. So she nervously writes it somewhere. List of places where secretaries write combinations, okay? Starts out with, you know, the most clever thing. It starts right out with you open the drawer, and the wood along the side of the drawer on the outside is written carelessly a number, like as if it was a ring voice number. That's the combination number. So it's on the side of the desk, okay? Desk drawer's locked. I can pick the lock easy. I open the lock right away. Pull out the drawer, look along the wood, nothing. Sorry, right, sorry. Right. There's a lot of papers in the drawer. I fish around among the papers, and finally I find it. A nice little piece of paper, which is the Greek alphabet, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and so forth, carefully printed. The secretaries have to know how to make those letters and how to call them when they're talking about them, right? So they all have, each one had a copy of this thing. But carelessly scrawled across the top is pi is equal to 3.14159. So I go up to the safe, 31, 41, 59, doesn't open. Uh, 13, 14, 95, doesn't open. 95, 14, 13, doesn't open. 41, 31, I, 20 minutes, I'm turning pi upside down, it doesn't open. So I start walking out of the office, and I said, you know, but it's true. Psychologically, I'm right. Freddie de Hoffman is just the kind of a guy to use a mathematical constant for his safe combination. So the other important mathematical constant is E. So I walk back to the safes, 27, 18, 28, click, it opens. <laughs> I checked, by the way, that all the combinations were the same. Well, there's a lot of stories about it, but it's getting late, and that's a good one, so we'll let it go at that. Well, let me come back next year. I enjoyed it.